going to introduce the topic of how a ph philosophy system is to be constructed. Uh, this is a very difficult question and um, one that I don't think that anybody answers adequately and um, like you kind of just end up having to make a philosophical decision kind of but I think people are generally not transparent enough um, in having made decisions of, of this kind and um, but then there's another end of uh, of the spectrum where you never get out of this question because you savor how difficult it is and then that becomes its own system of philosophy even a kind of metaphysics which is what La Ruelle does and uh, I love La Ruelle but um, that that approach has limitations as well which we'll get to so pretty much the way this will work um, is um, <clears throat> I split the question into three parts and then um, and then at the end I sort of give my provisional structure for Transcendental Kabbalah which is my philosophy system uh, that's kind of based on the best answers I can give to those questions at this time and uh, I reassess this every year which is a really important part of the philosophical method I've chosen to, to make it cyclical um, and to, to make it more like a religion in that way. And so uh, this this is like the season for it. The uh, Aquarius and the first decan of Pisces is devoted to renihilation, the question of what the best approach is for a philosophy system. So I'll just kind of introduce... The, the, the three ways I've broken down the question for now and then I'll, I'll do individual videos about each of um, the broken down the parts into which it's broken down um, so the first is the question of the best uh, structure of a philosophy system so in principle a system of philosophy has like uh, a number of different topics say something like logic metaphysics and ethics um, but uh, that list can go on or it can include things or not include things um, uh, and they cross-reference each other but they're also relatively autonomous and um, so uh, anyway, so there's a question of what that structure should be. Uh, but then also that's like synchronic, not simultaneous, but there's also like uh, over the course of the life of a philosopher, that person evolves and uh, you know you have to sort of do a series of instantiations of the system. Um, in the past, that's mostly been as, as books primarily, and then and lectures, but now, um, you know, posting such a thing, and um, uh, so anyway, I'll save more of my thoughts on that for the actual video on that. But so there's a question of the, the correct structure, and I guess the last thing I'll say is that. Um, you can also be opposed to systematic philosophy altogether and um, insist that um, you know you, you should just be able to be giving insights kind of ad hoc uh, okay so then there's the question so new topic is the question of the correct starting point for philosophy so there's this urge to kind of find something that is certain or eternal or a foundation. Um, the archetypal one that we immediately think of is the, the cogito of Descartes, I think of where I am. Um, but many other things have been chosen. <coughs> a equals A, God. Um, and 
this tends to be a kind of contingent decision and um and again you you can you can you can psychologize away the desire for a foundation of this kind which which Nietzsche is very explicit about doing um you know that there's it's kind of like there's a fearful need for a foundation and, and, and actually there is no foundation the thing is when you do that then you end up um in this kind of Heracletian mode where pure becoming uh is is the foundation um so anyway there's there's that question which is different the structure of a philosophy versus starting point of a philosophy um and then the third topic is basically how philosophy relates to pre-philosophical and non-philosophical concerns so like i'm a human being i have my own life my particular talents and desires and you know problems uh and so you know i i can never really fully um those those things motivate what i say and believe and do in ways that i'm not even fully conscious of um and that's true for any philosopher but that one one tends to try to sort of subtract the biography from philosophy <clears throat> and um that's maybe actually not fair to do you shouldn't do that um but it's not just biography it's also things like politics for example you know like a lot of uh, philosophers a lot of philosophers who are devoted to political philosophy especially uh and only to that uh just take for granted that you start out with your political views and then you you know try to try to find a philosophy that will advance those views um and maybe that's an okay approach but like you know you, you could say the opposite that you actually need to turn to philosophy to figure out what the correct political view is which is a more you know, platonic approach um and uh just generally, you know, philosophy is just weird because we, uh, you know, it's not a science because it, it inherently is attuned to those topics that are not objective. So, so, so like a, the objectivity of truth doesn't apply to philosophy. <clears throat> um, it concerns questions that science can't um, give a clear description of yet. That's kind of the point. Um, but it's also not an art uh, because, you know, the, the value of, of a work of philosophy clearly doesn't come from it being beautiful or popular um, because it, the point, again, is for it to kind of go against um, conventional taste and wisdom and ideas. And um, it's just not clear what philosophy is. Um, but in these videos, you know, I've, I've gone as far as I can so far in... Uh, making sense of these questions and choosing answers, which then I can update every year if I've changed my mind. But, um, so yeah, those are the three questions. And then, um, and then there's, uh, part four will be me discussing the structure of transcendental Kabbalah as a result of my con provisional conclusions about those questions, um, which we'll have a video too.